Here we go guys, alcohols and elimination reactions or chapter 10.3 lesson 1. So we've already taken a look at one functional group that was the alkyl halides in which a halogen is now found present within the molecule. Alcohols, when we take a look at these ones, have their own unique functional group and we see it here as an OH group. R is still just any hydrocarbon chain, OH is the functional group when found present in any hydrocarbon, actually has it behave as an alcohol. Be really careful here, this is not ionic, so this is not the hydroxide ion with an OH-, and it is not basic. Okay, be able to differentiate that. This OH group is found in the molecular formula of hydrocarbons, and the OH group becomes the functional group that makes a hydrocarbon behave as an alcohol. This OH group gets a specific name. It is called a hydroxyl group. So when one or more hydroxyl groups are present within the molecule, you now have something that will behave functionally different as an alcohol. So what makes alcohols so different from other hydrocarbons? Well, alcohols tend to have much, much higher boiling points than your other hydrocarbons of similar molecular weight and size. This is because of the polarity involved with the OH functional group and its ability to form hydrogen intermole uh, intermolecular bonds. All right, remember why water is so unique because of the presence of hydrogen bonding. Well, hydrogen bonding is also uh, affecting alcohols. So this gives them much more stability. This means that they tend to be things, uh, they tend to be liquid at room temperature rather than gases for their equivalent molecular weights. So they are much less volatile than similar hydrocarbons. Short chain alcohols get a much higher solubility in water due to the polarity and presence of hydrogen bonding, which is what water also does. Okay, so this is why we can make things such as spirits, wines, beers, and things like that, because ethanol is a short chain alcohol and therefore highly soluble in water. Take something like hexanol, on the other hand, and it is much less soluble because that hexane backbone that we have on it uh, is increasing the nonpolar amount. So the longer the hydrocarbon chain, or R, within your alcohols, the more we will see solubility decrease with size. So the larger your alcohol, the less likely it is to dissolve in water. Okay, so that's some of the properties that go along with alcohols. You'll want to pay attention to that and highlight some of those discussions in your textbook reading. As for naming them, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, again, dealing with a different functional group here, it is going to appear as a prefix or a suffix. The roots are still going to be the longest continuous chains. So the root that we're looking at here is going to be the longest continuous chain, but it must have the OH group attached along that longest continuous stretch. Alcohols are fundamentally different, and so we're going to name these guys a little bit differently. The suffix is what changes here, and we are going to add an additional suffix here uh, with an OL, hence alcohol. If there is more than one hydroxyl group, we have something known as a polyalcohol, and so you can have things such as diols, triols, tetrols, and so on and so forth. All right. When the suffix of your longest carbon chain ends in a vowel, please drop that vowel. So in an alkane, if I had hexane, the E would be dropped and replaced with the OL suffix. So it's not hexane all, it's hexanol. Propane 2 all versus butane 2 2 diol when we're dealing with polyalcohols. The E is only going to be uh, dropped if we have the single alcohol. The other prefixes kind of keep it in there. This is just for rolling off the tongue a little bit easier. Okay. For alcohols that have two carbons or less, the alcohol group can only really be on carbon one. Uh, so with respect to that, we tend to drop the numbers for small alcohols. We tend not to need them. Remember, if the uh, molecules are small and there's no real isomers possible, the numbers are usually dropped in hydrocarbon and um, hydrocarbon derivative names. If you have three or more carbons, then I must number the hydroxyl group because there are many possible places that it can go. Any other branches that we have would be named as prefixes, so alkyl halides, 
and your alkyl groups would still be named and numbered as normal. However, the hydroxyl group is the most important one now, so numbering should be lowest for your alcohol. One other little uh, goofy thing here, and that's when dealing with aromatic alcohols. So whenever you have your benzene ring and you have an OH group attached to it, it is referred to as a phenol. Okay, so let's put this into practice. If you want, you can try some of these on your own first and then restart the video to see how it goes. Remember, you're looking for the longest continuous chain that would have the OH group attached, and then you will name and potentially number the hydroxyl group and any other branches that you might see. Okay, so if you feel like uh, trying it from the instructions, go for it. If not, you can follow along with a few of these. You can see in this line angle, we have one, two, three carbons in that little shape there. So one, two, three is prop. Okay, you can see they're all single bonded, so it's propane. And we see that we have a single OH group in the middle here. It's longer than two carbons, so I can indicate where it is. And so this becomes propen to all. Okay, so we're just naming the presence of our hydroxyl group in the suffix. Here's another one. One, two, three, four, five. All right, you can see five carbons, all single bonded. So this is pent. It's all single bonded, so it's pentane. And now we just need to come up with a numbering strategy. From the left, the hydroxyl group is on carbon four. From the right, it's on carbon two. So I would number this from the right to keep my numbering strategy lowest. That still remains. Okay, uh, one more here. One, two, three. You can see this one's attached to the O. So if I put in a different symbol, there's no carbon there. So that's one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, and so we take a look at this one. I have a three carbon chain, which would be prop, all single bonded. So it's propane. And then we can see that it is on carbon one here. So propen one all, but there is also a methyl group attached to carbon two. So no spaces, appropriate dashes and numbers here, two methyl propen one all. Okay, can take a look at one more here. We have carbon one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. All right, all the different ways that I look at it, you can still see that the attachment here for hydroxyl is on carbon two. So here I have another propane, drop the E, hydroxyl group on carbon two. So this is propen two all. And I can see that I have that methyl group right there also on carbon two. So this is two methyl, propen two all. Okay, I hope those ones made a little bit of sense. You might feel confident enough to pause for a moment and try some of these other ones. Here we go. Okay, I can see one, two carbons here. Remember, if I put in another letter, I'm telling you the carbon is not there. So one, two is just eth. It's a single bonded carbon, ethane. And then I can see that I have three hydroxyl groups. And so all on carbon one here. And so I have ethan triol. If I had moved those hydroxyl groups around to uh, carbons one and two, I would likely include the numbers to say exactly where they are. Okay, but ultimately I have three all on carbon one. Here you can see a cyclic structure. Okay, and so in our cyclic structure here, we have one, two, three, four, five carbons. So this is a cyclopent arrangement for the longest chain. I can see again, they're all single bonded, so it's pentane. And I have two hydroxyl groups at carbons one and three. I'm just gonna move this over a little bit. Okay, so we're dealing with cyclopentane. And I have a carbon, or pardon me, I have hydroxyl groups at carbons one and three. And so this is a diol. Cyclopentan one, three diol. Again, commas to separate the numbers, 
dashes to separate the numbers from the letters in your name. Here we have one. You have hydroxyl group attached to a benzene ring. So that's phenol. I would only need numbers if I had more than one branch on this one. So no matter what I do on a benzene ring, if there's only one branch, it must be carbon one. One more to look at here. You can see another cyclic structure. One, two, three, four. So we have cyclobutane. And then I have one, two, or one, two. So I have a lowest numbering strategy, both clockwise and counterclockwise. I have to decide which number I'm going to use for which. Is it at one chloro or is it um, one hydroxyl? So for this one, the hydroxyl is the more important of the two when we take a look at these functional groups. So this would be a butan one all, which means I'm going to number this one clockwise, and so it'll be a two chloro. Okay, so as we kind of go through these various different functional groups, what we'll find is that we are increasing their relative importance in the molecule. As you guys go into university and things like that, you will have to memorize the uh, importance and the relative hierarchy of different functional groups, especially when they become combined. So it can become quite complex. Um, this would be the only case in which we will double down on two of them not too different from when we double down on things such as uh, looking at branches with double or triple bonds. You had two different things going on and you had to decide what was more important. So alkyl halides was the first group we looked at. It is a less functional, if you like, than the hydroxyl group. And so we give the hydroxyl group its, uh, its preference. As we keep going on, we won't mix it up uh, for you guys anymore. So this is the only one you really need to be aware of. When we come back in the next video, I will take you guys through drawing uh, these five examples and we'll continue on with 10.3.